Uh, my name is Carlos. They call me Los. Um, I own RV, Broadway, New Jersey. Um, we've been around now two and a half years. Um, we were originally located in Elizabeth, New Jersey on uh, 6 South Broad Street, right across from the public library. RV basically started because I, I had a really good job um, and, you know, it fed my family very well. Problem is that I didn't love it. And, you know, just like everybody now, um, they're starting to figure out that you can do something else besides that current job, right? So I wanted to uh, buy an actual RV, um, gut it out and put this in there and take it to food truck festivals, you know, and, and, and sell there and all these other festivals. Um, so towards the end of my, of my career, uh, in, in the corporate world, um, you know, having that idea in the midst of it, they, they let me go. So, you know, the, the, pro the progression was supposed to be from the actual RV to a brick and mortar. Um, however, when they let me go, man, I sat in my car and, and just stopped for a minute. And I said, I don't want to go back to doing what I was doing. I didn't like it back then. It had put me in a small depression state. I never wanted to be back there. So I said, you know what? I'm going to take a Hail Mary, man. I'm going to go from the actual RV, which I said, I can't do that. I can't feed my family part time. It's not going to work. So I took the Hail Mary and went to a brick and mortar. Um, RV stands for Roaming Ventures because I was roaming and, and venturing off to whatever, you know, life was going to take me. You know, that that's what RV really stands for. Um, and I hope that's inspiration to other people. Right. Like you don't have to be unhappy, but you also got to work to where you want to get get to. You know, if, if you don't work towards it and, and take action, you're just going to be in the same spot, man. You know, and you're just not going to go anywhere. So if you're unhappy and, you know, there's other ways to, to do it and, and other ways to make your dreams come true. You just got to work at it, man. Actually, the one person I kind of gravitated to was 2J. Uh, coincidentally, he's he's somebody that kind of thinks the same way I think. And that's when I was like, oh, you know, he's he's like me in a sense. And, and that's kind of, you know, the, the influence I took and try to go that route. Yeah. So why stay in Jersey? I mean, why not? Right. I grew up here. I know people here. Uh, if I go somewhere else in different state. I don't know the market. I don't know if people are into what we're doing, right? So if I open, let's say in Alabama or wherever, and they just don't have a market for this, we're just gonna fail, right? So um, I had to open where I felt was uh, an area that was gonna do well, that the people were, were into it. Uh, so that's why I stayed in Jersey and that's why we opened in our original location. Um, because I felt that that was a good spot to have a shop at, yeah. Some of the products we sell the most, to be honest with you, is our sneakers. Um, but we do focus on streetwear and vintage. Um, the aesthetics, we, we try to curate it to kind of somebody walking in and finding a full outfit, right? Um, from sneakers to t-shirts. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, kind of like a one-stop shop to, to get fresh, you know what I'm saying? Um, so right now our employee, uh, we have one employee, Kevin, um, we met him, he, he's been a sneakerhead for a long time. And when we first opened, he was in my shop like every day. Um, he would come in, we would talk. Um, sometimes we become like ther uh, 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 therapists and they just tell us about life stories and things like that. And you know, you, you build relationships with these people. Um, and he was always coming in and one day, you know, I, I hit him up. I'm like, hey, look, you know, I'm looking for somebody right now. Um, so why don't you come in if, if you need a job? And he's like, yeah, man. And, and he was excited to come through. And I knew the type of person he was and he was very reliable. And he's still rock and rolling with us to this day. So yeah, that's how we met him. Um, that's how we met Kevin. I had a job and a friend of mine that, that I got cool with, uh, Steven De La Cruz, I'm shouting you out, Steven. Um, he was a collector of sneakers and he was doing it for a while. And this was about 15 years ago or so. And, um, you know, he, he 
put me onto it, man. You know, like he would wear his sneakers. I'm like, oh, I remember those and blah, blah, blah. And little by little, I just started buying and buying and buying. And by the time I knew it, I, I had a decent collection. So that's kind of where it started. Um, he, he influenced me and, and just going back to, to like, oh yeah, I remember when those came out and, and I couldn't get them. You know, we weren't rich, but we weren't poor. So finally, when I was able to get it, that's, you know, it started from there. Yeah. I remember when I was younger, a friend of mine that lived next door had uh, gotten the Jordan 13 Flints when they originally came out. I hate you, Anthony. <laughs> I wasn't able to get that sneaker, man. But man, I loved it so much. The colors were just vibrant. It was just a super dope shoe. Um, that was one of my grails. I mean, to, to somebody else, you know, a grail is something different. But to me, that Jordan 13 was like, I always remember it. Even right now, I can visually see him wearing them. And I'm like, man, I, I wish I was able to, to get that sneaker. I never was. Um, but when I was able to, I definitely did. Um, I had the retro. I had every almost every release after that. Um, and they just re retro So perfect because they came out very dope with the 3M and everything. And I love that shoe. So that's one that just doesn't leave, you know, my collection. Yeah, that's the one. I wouldn't say the most expensive, but here's a, a quick story of a good sneaker that we had. Um, we had gotten in a pair of Easy Blinks for a really good price. Um, literally got them in, started cleaning them. They were a little dirty. Um, we put them to the side, you know, to let them dry a little bit. As soon as I put them to the side, like five, 10 minutes later, a customer came in and just scooped them up like that immediately. Um, and that was when we first started, right? When we first opened. So something like that is like, wow, I'm finally gonna showcase these sneakers that, you know, it's, it's a grail for some people. And we didn't even get to post it. <laughs> it came in and came out. So nobody knew we even had it. Uh, and then that person, you know, he cleaned them up and, and uh, you know, little touch ups here and there. And they have a grail, man. I've seen the sneaker now and it looks like new. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad he got a sneaker and, and, you know, a grail of his. So, yeah. Man, I love vintage. You know, when, when I first started collecting sneakers, whenever I would walk into a store and saw a sneaker that I couldn't find and it was just randomly sitting somewhere else, it was like, wow, like, you know, I finally found it. So that feeling after 15 years starts to dwindle down a little bit. Um, so when I started doing vintage about like, what, four years ago or so, that was the same feeling I was getting when I was at the racks and found one t-shirt. I was like, oh my God, I remember this and, and blah, 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 blah. And this was the year that this happened and so forth. So that same feeling I had with sneakers started uh, to trickle to, to vintage. And that's how I got into the vintage game. So I love it, especially like, things that you you went through and you find a t-shirt that you remember from that memory you know that's it's awesome it's an awesome feeling you know you, okay this is this is this is actually a very good story so one day um i was supposed to head to the thrift but i was like you know what i think i'm gonna pass i'm tired today you know i'm gonna go to you know to eat or whatever it was my brother who's also into vintage <laughs> Coincidentally goes into the same thrift store I was supposed to go to. Man, do I regret not going that day. This kid found a vintage Mike Tyson t-shirt, rap tee, just sitting there. Not just that, he found a vintage Sade rap tee right behind that one. Man, do I regret that day. <laughs> that was a day I highly regret and you know, good for him, right? He, he found them and he, he showed them to me. Man, they were super dope tees. And and they, I think actually they were my size, if I'm not mistaken. And man, that what, what a crazy story that was, yeah. Struggles, there's always struggles, man. You know, when we first started, it was my first business, period, right? Like. I knew nothing about opening up a shop. So everything I did was a struggle, right? From finding a spot, from, you know, learning the, the buy, sell, trade aspect of it. Um, have I ever wanted to stop? Actually, no. I'm, I'm the type of person that when things are getting rough, 
I want to get even better and bigger. Um, and there's always times with a small business you're going to run into to issues, always. Um, especially when you're when you're starting out because you're making errors and learning from those errors, right? Some people call them L's, I call them lessons. Um, so with those lessons, you take it and you don't make that same uh, error the next time. Um, but I've always wanted to do this, um, you know, in, in a sense. So yeah, I mean, I, I always want to just keep getting bigger and better. Even if we take that L, the next one is going to be bigger, you know? So yeah, the clientele, man, just people coming in and, and talking and all walks of life, right? From a regular person to somebody who owns a shop as well, right? Like Willie, um, you know, um, just people that I've never met before. I've always been a people person. So when somebody comes in for the first time, I kind of, you know, hey man, you know, where are you from? Blah, blah, blah. Cause I've never seen them. So I just want to know where they're from, where the market is, right? So if they're like, oh, I'm from, you know, West New York. I'm like, wow, we've reached West New York. That's how you found us. So I kind of get to know the scope of where our market is and going, you know, where it is and it is going. First and foremost, be cool with everybody. Um, I watched the previous epi uh, episode, excuse me, with uh, past, uh, past, present, future, and you know he said a lot of good things in there, uh, a lot of gems, especially like don't be a dickhead. <laughs> That's the number one rule I think. Um, coming from uh, a previous job where a lot of it was the connections you had and, and to bigger companies, um, you know some people are are dickheads <laughs> you know and one day or another you're gonna need something from that person and when you go to that person you know if they're a dick you're not gonna want to do anything with them so when they need something in return you're gonna be a dickhead right back to them and and it's unfortunate but that's the way that things are right so always be cool with everybody everybody that walks in uh, even us right a, a person could walk in might not look like you know they're gonna spend any money but you don't know right you just don't know um i've seen people spend a lot of money and not dress like streetwear stuff right they could be wearing an old navy t-shirt and you know buy some great things you didn't think they were gonna buy but if you didn't pay any attention to them say what's up to them or you know or, or even like talk to them they're just gonna leave you know they're and, and they want to spend money with you it's just sometimes it's a customer service aspect of it right like you just talk to them and get to know them if they don't buy something that day they're gonna come back and buy something another day um, and I've always had that philosophy man like just say hi to everybody be cool with everybody because one day you might need them and you know they'll be like yeah man you were so cool here's a favor or here's this or yeah I'm willing to do it let's rock you know and that's always a great feeling when somebody's willing to rock with you you know what I'm saying so yeah um, Another piece of advice, capital. Capital is huge in this game. Um, the bigger the capital, the bigger the win. Um, so yeah, those two things are, are probably the, the biggest things uh, that you're gonna need, yeah. So we are RV, uh, located on 89 East Cherry Street, Rawway, New Jersey. Uh, Instagram at r.ventures underscore. We're open Monday through Saturday, 12 to 7 p.m. Um, yeah, come check us out, man. We're here. Man, I feel like I'm talking to that bear, and that bear's just gonna jump out and slap me. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> so for me, a grail is a sneaker that holds value to you right so like that sneaker that jordan 13 flint held value for me like it was just a memory that's etched in my mind forever um so that's a grail to me right some other people it could be oh off-white one or whatever that's cool those are cool um but i grew up in an era where if you had an og sneaker you were the man you know you any og if you're if your collection had just og sneakers you were that dude you were that dude now it's like you have og sneakers ah you all right you cool but it's it's a different generation so i don't blame them it's just that i grew up differently so to me a jordan 13 flint is one of my grails yeah for sure <laughs>